In this video, we're going to use MicroThema's visual interface to learn how Flexbox properties work. To help illustrate, I've prepared some colored boxes, and at the end of this video, I'll explain how to copy the code for these boxes onto your own WordPress site to experiment yourself. Flexbox is well supported by modern browsers. Older versions of Internet Explorer and Safari only have partial support for Flexbox, in that not all Flex properties will work, but these browsers are in little use these days, and where applicable, MicroThema includes vendor prefixes to maximize browser compatibility. There are two parts to Flexbox layouts, the flexible container element, which in this case has a thick blue border, and the flexible items directly inside, colored boxes in this example. Currently, the container and colored boxes do not have any Flex properties applied, and so they just display in the default way. To change this, we need to create two selectors, one for the container element, another for the boxes inside. So to target the container element, we click the target button to enter targeting mode, and then click on the border of the container element to select it. If the container didn't have a border, we would need to click on something inside the container, and then use the directional controls to move targeting up, or expand the advanced targeting controls and use the HTML pane or breadcrumbs. With our container element selected, we just click the create selector button. And then we repeat the process for the flexible items with a few adjustments. Flexible items are the direct descendants of the flexible container element. And so we will choose the option that is directly to the right of the flex container element in the HTML breadcrumb trail. Also, by default, Microsoft only targets the single element we clicked. So to broaden the targeting to all flex items, we will choose the second option in the suggestions list, which targets all eight flex items. Finally, we click the create selector. We can then go to the Flexbox styling options. By the way, MicroThema has an option for displaying text labels, which is useful if we haven't yet learned what the icons alone represent. The keyboard shortcut Ctrl-Alt-L makes it easy to toggle these labels off if we want to see a bit more of the site preview. Some Flexbox properties are only meant to be applied to the flexible container element, while others are only meant for flexible items. By default, MicroThema shows properties for the flexible container. But as we're currently on the selector for flex items, let's switch to the flex items properties. We'll come back to the selector in a moment though, because the item properties won't actually have an effect until we apply some flexbox properties to the container element. Um, we can easily navigate between selectors using the arrows. To enable flexbox on the container element, we need to set the display property to flex. This instantly transforms the layout of the flex items so that they stack together from left to right on a single row. The default value for flex direction is row, but other values are available. Row reverse will order the flex items horizontally, but in reverse from box H to box A. Column and column reverse will change the main axis of the container from horizontal to vertical. With column reverse, ordering flex items from bottom to top instead of top to bottom. When we change the flex direction property in MicroThema, its icon rotates to show how the main axis has changed. The main axis is important because it dictates the behavior of all the other Flexbox properties. In order to demonstrate this, let's take a little detour to give the container element a fixed height of 500 pixels. This will make certain alignment styles more apparent later. Going back to the Flexbox properties, notice what happens to the Flex Wrap icon when we set the Flex Direction back to Row. It shows that the Flex items will break onto new rows if the content exceeds the available space. The default value for Flex Wrap is No Wrap, so we must set it to Wrap in order to see this behavior. The Justify Content property follows the main axis. With Flex Direction set to Row, the main axis is horizontal, and so if we set Justify Content to Flex End, the items will be right aligned. The Align Items property follows the cross axis. The cross axis runs perpendicular to the main axis, and so in this case it runs vertical. If we set Align Items to Flex End, the items will be bottom aligned. This is in the context of each line of flexible items. 
not the overall container. To control the bunching of multiple flex signs, we use the align content property. The align content property is only effective when flex wrap is enabled and results in multiple flex lines, as in this example. Align content also acts along the cross axis. So if we set align content to flex end, the lines will bunch at the bottom of the container. Now, notice what happens to the align items and the justify content icon if we set flex direction to column. They practically switch functionality because now they align on opposite axes. Setting justify content to flex start, for instance, top aligns the items and setting align items to flex start left aligns the items. Align content does nothing in this new context because the flex items only span one vertical line. To show how flex items wrap over vertical lines when flex direction is set to column, let's temporarily reduce the height of the container. Now it becomes clear that the align content property is right aligning the items due to the current flex end value. If we set this to flex start, like the other properties, the items will left align. To maintain a consistent starting point while we explore further flexbox options, let's switch flex direction back to row and restore the height of the container. One of the most useful aspects of Flexbox is vertical stretching. By setting align items to stretch, we can make the boxes fill the height of the line. And if we set align content to stretch, the lines will stretch to fill the height of the container. Justify content doesn't have a supported stretch value, at least at the time of publishing. For that reason, it's not immediately obvious how to get the colored boxes to horizontally fill the container. But thankfully, the answer lies with the flex items properties. So we'll move on to the selector we created for the flexible items. The flex grow property determines what ratio of the available space should be added to the size of a flex item during the process of enlarging the flex items to fill the whole space. Flex grow is set to zero by default. So none of the available space is added to the flex items. But if we set flex grow to one, the available space on each row will be divided equally and spread between the flex items on the same row. We currently have two rows of flex items. And so the little bit of space on the top row is shared among boxes A to F, while the larger amount of space on the bottom row is spread between boxes G and H. Because it was just the available space that was shared evenly, the boxes are not yet evenly sized. The initial and varying width of the boxes, resulting from the varying amount of text in each, still contributes to the final size of the boxes. To make the boxes the same size, we can set the flex basis property to 25%, or if we want a slightly less conventional layout, to 18%. To explain the rest of the flex item properties, let's create a selector for every other flex item. To do this, we enter targeting mode, click on one flex item, broaden our targeting to all flex items, and then use the nth of type pseudo class to select only even boxes. After creating our selector, we set a border so it's easy to see which items are even. Then switch back to the flex item fields. The current computed values are shown in the boxes. The flex grow value is one. But if we set flex grow to five, the even items will gain a higher ratio of the total available space for each row. This available space inside the container is referred to as positive space. It contrasts to negative space, which we will touch on in a moment. But first, let's reset flex grow to one so we can see the effect of the other properties in isolation. 
Flex shrink is the opposite to flex grow. It refers to the shrink factor applied to items to ensure that they don't overflow the container. Flex shrink has no effect when flex wrap is enabled because items wrap over new lines instead of shrinking to fit one line. So let's temporarily set flex wrap to no wrap. The default value for flex shrink is one, which prevents overflow. If we temporarily set flex shrink to zero for all flex items, we can see how much the flex items naturally overflow because the combined flex basis we set adds up to more than 100%. This overflow corresponds to what's known as negative space. The overflow area must be subtracted from the flex items when we set flex shrink to a non-zero value like one. Setting flex shrink back to one means the total subtraction needed will be shared equally among all the flex items. However, if we now go to the selector for just even flex items and set flex shrink to two, the even items will take on twice as much of the total subtraction as the odd items. In other words, the even items reduce in size by taking on a greater share of the negative space. A common misconception about flex grow and flex shrink is that the flex items will be sized relative to each other, where setting flex grow to two will make an item twice the size of an item that has flex grow value of one. But hopefully you've now learned that this is not the case. Growth and shrinking are actually determined by the amount of positive or negative space being added to or subtracted from the flex items. Let's reinstate flex wrap before moving on. If we set flex basis to 12% on the even items, which is two thirds of the odd items, we can get a fairly interesting looking layout. The aligned self property allows us to align our subset of flex items differently from the default align items value set on the flexible container. If we set align self to baseline, the first line of text in each box will line up at a common baseline regardless of font size. The final flex property is order. It's possible to override the natural order of flex items. The default value for order is zero, but if we set this to one, all even items will appear last. And if we set this to minus one, all even items will appear first. A great way to cement your understanding of Flexbox is to set up these color boxes on your own WordPress site and then play around with the different combinations of Flexbox properties. You can grab the HTML code for these boxes from Themeover's website by going to themeover.com forward slash microthema hyphen Flexbox. Then create a new page on your site and paste the HTML code via the text tab of the WordPress editor and then publish it. Then visit the page by clicking the permalink. And if you've installed Microthema, you can edit the page using the Microthema menu in the top toolbar. The GUI fields for Flexbox aren't available with the free version of Microthema, but you can still experiment with Flexbox by entering the CSS code yourself via the custom code editor. Then it's over to you. I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you get stuck, please feel free to post a question in our forum. Thanks a lot for watching.